Right now, we want to bring in Jacob Frankel. He is former senior counsel in the SEC's Division of Enforcement. He is now the chair of the Government Investigation and Securities Enforcement Practice at Dickinson Wright. And, and Jacob, let's walk through what happened yesterday because it was weird. It was kind of confusing. Um, his attorney locally saying that this was a decision he was making to go ahead with extradition that was against his best and strongest legal advice. What, how, how do you digest all of this? How would you say things are playing out? Um, I, I think walking through chaos would probably be the best way to describe it. I mean, I think it's something that's unprecedented. I've been practicing law 37 years. I've worked on international extradition matters involving securities fraud cases, and it's something I've never seen before because, to me, close coordination with local counsel is critical. I mean, one of the things we talked about on Friday was, was to an extent, Bankman Freed's gamesmanship. And I guess one of the questions is whether the request to see the indictment uh, reflected his having been told that there was likely to be a much more robust indictment that would be forthcoming as a foundation for for its ultimate extradition. But I think, yeah, I, I, just, I really think it was just a, a fundamental lack of communication and lack of coordination that we saw yesterday, because we, as you've indicated, as we've heard from Kate, I mean, now he's planning to waive extradition, which to me simply means he's coming back. He'll probably be arraigned in a U.S. court, I would think, as early as tomorrow. And I interpret that to mean, even though, Again, as we discussed on Friday, I think his best strategy, consistent with what the Bahamian lawyer was saying, was that he should not be waiving and should be fighting extradition, is that he's coming back to the United States, he's going to appear in court, I think, ultimately, and probably in not too distant future, he's going to enter a guilty plea, and I think he's going to cooperate. So at this point, you think he's going to throw himself at the mercy of the court. I mean, th this is not someone who is not legally astute. Both of his parents are lawyers. They are professors at Stanford Law School. Um, are they advising him separately? Can you make heads or tails of this? Or is he just ignoring it, 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 them, too? <laughs> it really is impossible to figure out what is going on. I mean, you know, the one that, the, you know, as we've talked about, because Friday we talked a little bit about conspiracy theories, you know, one of the questions is, you know, was yesterday a little bit of an act, too, you know, in order to, at some point to be able to say, I really did not understand the proceedings before me. I did not understand the proceedings in the Bahamas. I did not understand what extradition was going to mean. But ultimately, there's going to be a dialogue between him and the court, whether it's the court in the Bahamas or the court in the United States, in which he is going to have to acknowledge that he everything has been explained to him. He understands the proceeding and he's knowingly waiving whatever rights he would have, whether it be to contest extradition or ultimately as part of a guilty plea, including you know, waiver of his of his appeal rights. So, you know, from whom he's getting personal counsel, you know, we don't know. But at the same time, I think what we saw yesterday was fundamentally a lack of communication coordination um, bet between and among the lawyers more than anything else. But you're you're saying that that wouldn't fly if he later tries to say, I didn't know what I was doing. I, none of this, that, that that won't fly because it's all been explained to him and he has chosen to waive his right. It, it, ex exactly. And we've actually gone through a history in the U.S. system um, and in the, in the international extradition legal processes where this you know, the practice of making sure a defendant understands fully the rights that he or she has, the rights that are being waived, are part of the communication before the judge actually rules. So I think if it's an act, it's going to fail. I heard speculation earlier that he was doing this because he thought he might be more likely to get um, out on bail in the United States. His attempts to do that in the Bahamas have been unsuccessful. He's made repeated attempts at that. Do you think there's any chance that he would get bail in the United States? Because I would think he's a huge flight risk. Yeah, that, that, that's, a good, that's a great question. I think initially there is no way he is going to get bail um, or the bail would just be astronomical such that it well, would not be. Of, potentially. He's got a lot right. of I, I don't, money I don't potentially. Think he... it could have squirreled away somewhere. Exactly. But I seriously doubt that, that, that he is going to get bail. But if, in fact, he does co he enters a guilty plea, does cooperate, and then is working with a bankruptcy trustee, is working with the new CEO, is working with uh, federal prosecutors to to explain what hap happened to the extent that you know that he's able to do so. Then I think it is conceivable that down the road 
Um, he could get bail before sentencing, but I really view it as highly unlikely. 